All right, welcome to our latest film breakdown. Today we're talking about Cleveland Browns rookie Dewan Jones, the offensive tackle from Ohio State University. And today we're going to break down his performance against the Philadelphia Eagles as a part of the Browns' second preseason game. we got a nice cut-up of place for you here to highlight exactly Dewan Jones' strengths, what he can bring to this Browns offense. This kid looks like a special prospect based on what we've seen on film, but we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So right now, I want you guys to focus on the Dewan Jones. You can see him right there. He's the right tackle. So he's on our left side of the screen right there. You look at his stance. His stance is more even. His offense, his two feet right there. You see how they're pretty much right around the same level. This is much more aggressive, quick throw game. He's going to want to attack Nolan Smith. That's the defensive end right there. First round draft pick from Georgia, national champion. He's going to want to attack him on the outside to get his hands down, to get a clear passing lane for DTR. Watch how he does this. Look how quick he gets out of the stance. He's so quick, he's putting his hand on the tight end to get him by because the tight end's too slow getting out of his stance. He attacks him, boom, done. Immediately negated. That is really good stuff, really aggressive stuff. Get out of there. Look how quick that is right there, Mice. He is beating the tight end. That's a tight end out of the stance. Gets over there. Nolan Smith completely negated. Great job. Squares him up. Balls out. Nice play. Yeah, Nick. And I think the big thing here is this guy is quick. But we have to remember, he's six foot eight, 375 pounds. This is one of the biggest players in the NFL. This guy is an absolute monster. And have that uh, ability, to have first step quickness like that, I think that is a huge key going forward. And I think this is going to be a gigantic asset for the Browns, don't you think, Nick? Oh, no doubt about it. You can kind of see it as you work through more of the clips. So we got another play here. And again, you look at his stance right there. I want to keep pointing this out. You see how his feet are essentially at the same level. This is a quick game. And by quick game, I mean quick throw. The quarterback has to get rid of the ball quickly here. What they're designed on this offensive line is to make sure there's no immediate threat in the quarterback's face and that no one gets their hands up and potentially bats down a quick throw. Basically, you want to create a clear passing lane for the quarterback to make a quick th reading throw. And again, you can see it right here, right at him. Great job. Way to attack him. If you look at the left tackle, he's a little slower than I'd like. He still hasn't engaged. If DTR looks and throws to this side of the field right here, number 96 could potentially deflect that. Number three for Philadelphia, no chance. He's immediately engaged. No chance to get a chance to deflect that ball from DTR. Look how quick he is. That's awesome stuff. That's a lot of ground to cover, no matter how big or small you are. This is a great job. And there's some finer points technically he can improve on. But I love the fact that he's able to get out there in space. And for a big guy, so watch this. You're going to see how he moves his feet out there, not his upper body. He keeps everything square and balanced, stays in front, and just absolutely negates Nolan Smith. That's a great job right there. Yeah, I think one big part here is we have to remember that, especially due to the injury with Hassan Reddick, Smith could be the starting defensive end for this team, so one of the starting pass rushers for this team. He's going to be out there. So this is, you know, ones on ones type of situation. If Jones ever is able to get into that starting lineup for the Browns, he's going against a very, very good player. A guy that was at Georgia, like you said, they have like multiple, multiple first round draft picks on the defensive line. So I love this, you know, level of competition early in a preseason game. And again, you're going to see it here. Similar kind of deal, right? Again, you see feet level attack. And again, he does it again. Look at this. Right up there in space. Great job. And the point is here, you see how Nolan Smith, his hands are down. Nolan Smith is already trying to work up the field. He has no chance to get any passing lane for DTR. DTR can make his quick reads, get rid of the ball quickly, and not worry at all. See, look at that clean passing lane. If you look at this guy, number 75, see how he, on the other side of the line, left side of the line, look at this left tackle. See how he doesn't get his hands down? 75 is a chance to get his hands up, potentially to deflect it. This is a really good job right here by Devon Jones being aggressive out there for that kind of scheme. That is a really nicely done. All right, and here we're going to go to the next round. So you can see, look at his stance right here now, Mice. You see how it's his uh, right foot is now back in more of a traditional two-point stance for a pass-protecting offensive tackle. This is going to be a more standard kick slide. That means he's going to just try and drop back here, a more what we would call probably a five-step drop, a probably a three-step drop out of the shotgun. The job that this is a much longer throw. This is not a quick game. This is more standard you know, high to low kind of progression from the quarterback. This is really good protection right here by DeJuan Jones. Look at this patience. Look where he engages him. This is really good stuff. Kick, 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 patience, waits for him, done, completely negated. And now look, I saw some people on social media, and I want to highlight this, On you know, after the game, we're talking about Nolan Smith. 
you know, beating Jones here. And this is a great job by Nolan Smith. Look at where the snap happens right here. You can see it right here. One yard, uh, one and a half yards before this five yard denomination. If you look where Nolan Smith ends up, he's all the way back here. Mine. That's about 10, 11 yards behind the line of scrimmage, overextended over the top. If there wasn't pressure from the right right here, Nolan Smith would be embarrassingly out of play. DTR would step up, potentially roll up out of here, and it would be a big play. This is really good by DeWan Jones. Again, look at his patience. One, two, three. Gets him really late. That's awesome. You want to be so patient in that perspective, especially when you're a big guy with his size. You, the one thing I always worry about with big guys is they don't play big, right? They try and bully people a little too much in pass protection. They try and be very aggressive, get out there, and sometimes they get beat on like quick swims or uh, spin moves, things like that. He doesn't do that. Very patient, wastes the last moment, does a really nice job there. Yeah, and I think one thing we need to get through here, Nick, they say that uh, Smith beat Jones on this play, but you got to remember, Jones gave the quarterback a good three to four seconds to get the ball out of his hands. I think in the NFL level, that's all you can ask for. So I think he did his job beautifully here, like you said. And if that uh, right side did not, or left side of the ball did not collapse uh, on him, I think that they go ahead and, you know, have a little bit better success on that play. But I think him giving the quarterback plenty of time, I think that's all you can ask for in today's NFL. Again, more of the same. You see him? Look at this. Right. You know how I talked about before how Nolan Smith was about 10 yards upfield and, and, and past the quarterback? I guarantee you that happens. He either gets yelled on the sideline or told by a coach during the, you know, between the next place. That can't happen. That's a mistake. You've got to stay in your lane. You can't go past the quarterback. So watch Nolan Smith here. He tries to stay quarterback level. doesn't want to go past him. But here's the beautiful part. This is where Dewan Jones is scary. Look how patient he is. Waiting, waiting, waiting. He literally gives Nolan Smith nowhere to go. He doesn't overreact. He takes his time, puts hands on him. It, it's just negated, right? That's my nickname for this guy. I'm going to call him the negator. Because all he does is take supposed amazing all-American superstar athletes like Nolan Smith and negate them. I mean, there's just nothing he can do. You know, you're, you're, you're just done, Smith. You're just absolutely nothing you can do in that situation. And that's what Dewan Jones can bring to the table, just negating quality athletes like this. Like, there's just – no matter how good of a pass rusher you are with a guy that size, that patient, that fundamentally sound, there's nothing you can do. All right, so here we go. So now we've got a different pass rusher. We've got number 75 from Philly across from uh, Jones here. Look, again, now we're looking the other way, right? We're going the other direction. He's the right tackle here. Standard pass protection. You're going to see his right foot depth, so he's going to take a st steeper kick slide. Watch what Jones does here because this is awesome stuff. So it's a stunt game, right? The defensive end right there. He's working. He's flashing up the field, and he's going inside. Flashing up the field, going inside. Watch what Jones here. Push him, jam him inside and square up to pick up the stun on the game on the coming back around. You see this defensive tackle right here? Watch this defensive tackle. You step here, he's going to work back around. No chance. This is elite level stuff from Jones. I love the punishment. So you get 75, you try and do a stunt. Nope, I'm just going to shove you into the dirt. But look at look how balanced he is. He just puts a grown man, an NFL athlete, into the ground, squares up and picks up the stunt. This is great stuff by Jones. Jones essentially blocked two people on this play, putting one of them in the ground. This is elite level stuff from Jones. Yeah, Nick, and this guy is no slouch either. Number 75 for the Eagles is uh, former Coastal Carolina Chanticleer, Taron Jackson. He was an edge rusher there, and he was phenomenal at Coastal. He had over 90 PFF grades uh, for two seasons there. So this guy is no slouch, and I love the way that he comes in and just completely, like you like to say, negates this guy. He is doing a tremendous job in the passing game, and I think that the, this guy could be a big asset for the Browns you know, get leveling up their pass protection, just keeping the, you know, high level of offensive line play they want. And I think this will go great for Deshaun Watson in the future. All right, let's talk about the run game here a little bit, a lot of pass protection. So here we're going to have a double team on 72 and a come on 74. You got jo Jones 74 is going to come off linebacker and basically open this hole up. Watch this pop, boom. Right now, look, there's some things about technique, and I get it. Some O line coaches, gurus out there, be like, he's way too high, his feet are too close together. I get it. There's things to correct. But I tell you what, this because this right guard's not giving him any help. The right guard's kind of getting blown up, not doing a great job, giving him no help at all. He gets a good shove on him, secures it, right, pushes him down into the ground, right? 72 ends up down in the dirt on his knees, so he's completely out of the play, opens up the hole from that perspective, and then comes off on the linebacker, boom, gives the running back the lane to run. That's good stuff, right? It's, it's not pretty. 
And to be honest, it would be a lot pretty if 68 could get up the field and get some action here, get some stuff going on. Because this is, you can see it right here. You can see the center pulling. I'm sorry, the left guard pulling. He's kicking out that defensive end. The tight end's going up to that linebacker. 74 is working up to the backside linebacker. So it looks good. Everything's executed. He comes off, does a great job. This is a better play of 68, does a halfway decent job because it's supposed to basically run straight up north and south. He's supposed to not have to cut back. It's really supposed to pull, follow the polar, to be honest, and kind of run that direction. But because of this caving in, it creates sort of a cutback lane there for the running back. Running back sees it, does a good job, ends up being a nice play. But I just love the 70. Look, coming off here, coming off, turn school, shoulders, bang, right? Give your guy a chance. Get a body on a body, the right guy at the right time, good timing. And it just creates a hole. He caved that defensive lineman down, got off on time to get a piece of the linebacker, ends up being a nice play. Yeah, Nick, I think this is just another good example of something you talk about all the time is he's putting in the work, he's doing what he's supposed to do, he's chipping, he's going north to south, moving up the field to get that second level guy. I think this is just another, again, a really great play when you say. Oh yeah, 100%. Because it's just one of those things that if you don't get help, if you don't get help on this double team from the guard, and likewise, if you're a guard and you don't get help from your tackle on the double team, it looks really ugly, right? Because ideally, and we see it every once in a while, we'll see in a few plays, actually, if it's a good double team, you'll get movement north and south up the field, or at least you'll get a massive cave down, you know, get north-south, and you get an east-west act, east -west action. So you could get a movement like in that direction or in that direction. But if you have movement just this way, that's a sign that the tackle is doing more things, uh, putting more weight in than the guard is, because this is not a great job by the guard, kind of picking on him a little bit here. But I tell you what, this is a good job. Shove, time it, get off. Like that's a five-yard run because of him. So that's a really nice job by DeWan Jones. All right, so let's talk about a little run game action here. We're looking at here another type of run. Of course, we saw the double team of play ago, but let's talk about some zone to the left here where you've got 74 Jones on the backside. He's going to do what's called a scoop technique where him and the right guard are going to scoop. They're trying to cut off this defensive lineman and that linebacker. The play side, they're all taking a step with their left foot. It's a zone to that side. They're reaching. They're getting up to the next level. They're trying to create a seam for the running back to cut through. But I want to focus on 68 and 74 here and the heck of a job they do, right? Because their job is to cut off that guy and that guy. Watch exactly what they do. Look at this. Beautifully cut off. And look at that hole. Look at this hole right here. That is absolutely monstrous. If this is Nick Chubb, that's a touchdown. This is a phenomenal job. If this tight end right here doesn't get blown up at the point of attack, I mean, he gets just jacked up. Guy comes off, makes a play. It's a, it's a three, four yard run. Should be a touchdown. Right. This is a phenomenal job up front, because if you look at right here where these guys are cut off, this is, again, 74 Jones. I'd like him to be a little quicker out of his stance. There's a few things I'd like to clean up, but he gets there. One thing I like, remember, you look where he is right now. See how he's about a, a yard to the right of where he needs to be to cut off 97. Look at his track. He keeps working this way. He knows he has to cut him off and keeps working, keeps working. He's working and he's just cut off there. I mean, again. Look at that hole. Look at this seam right here. This is Chubb. This tight end. I mean, if this is starting tight end, it's not as embarrassed. He's going to be over here. Chubb's going to cut it this way and then work north and south right up the hash, and he's gone. He's hitting his head on the goalpost. This is really well blocked. There's a little things to clean up, and look, I've been picking on 68 a few times today. This is a really good job by him as well, helping out the defensive tackle, getting up on the linebacker. Great job all around in terms of the backside. Better tight end block, and that's a touchdown. And come regular season time, that will be a touchdown. That All right, Mike, so you know me. I always love to end when we talk about offensive line play on just putting people into the dirt and destroying their wills, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So we're going to just have a standard double-team block between 74 and 68. He's got his hand on the ground this time. Don't see that a lot from Jones during the preseason game. But look what happens here. Look, they come off. It's a double-team. Engage, 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 drive, and demolish. Look, I mean, again, technically, is there things you want to improve on? Yeah, but I will say this. Step together, hit together, drive, 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 and put them into the dirt. Like, that's that is good stuff. And look, I understand maybe, you know, come off on the linebacker. I think this play was designed to go right and cut back right behind the center, or something like this, because you can see the center chip and then come off. I think 68 is eyeing this guy right here. If he feels he comes off, he never does. He cuts back because the running back sees the opening, which is probably a smart read by the uh, running back. Jones is supposed to stay on this till the end of time. That's kind of how I'm viewing this scheme. And that's exactly what he does. I, I mean, it's just good stuff. Drive, drive, drive. Defensive lineman tries to stay low to hold his gap. You know, good effort by 72 technique-wise. But Jones is just a, a better football player than you are. And then just lay on him and lay on him and lay on him. You've earned the right. When you put someone in the dirt like that, take your time getting up. 
make him feel all 300 plus pounds of you. This is fun stuff. This is where it's fun to be an offensive line, taking a grown 300 pound NFL professional athlete whose job it is to not get moved and put him into the dirt. This is phenomenal stuff from Dewan Jones. Yeah, Nick, I think this really shows a lot of power. And a guy like Jones, he does have a ton of power. It's like you said, this is a huge human being. They are just moving this guy like nobody's business. And I like the part that you talk about the running back. At the end of the day, this has to be a good play, right? Because he gets, what, to the one, to the two right here on the run. At the end of the day, I think this was a really well-blocked play, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so I think, you know, just going back to the beginning here, you know, it's one of those things. Anytime you get movement at the point of attack, and what you see here from this double team, and you get bodies on bodies, hats on hats, you give yourself a chance, right? Because all you want is a chance. If you see right here, tight end does an okay job. The defensive end kind of runs himself out of the play. You've got these two guys on these two, and you get movement north and south out of this double team. What it does, if you if you look at this space and freeze it right here, you basically, because of these four and a little less the tight end, but he did his part too, you basically have given the running back from here, from a little bit to about three yards to the left of the right hash, to all the way over here to where the second tight end is blocking here to read and give yourself a chance, right? Because the, what you really want in these situations is where it becomes hard, and you see it sometimes when plays get strung out, is running backs just don't have anywhere to go. They don't have anywhere to read. They have no no way to go, no way to figure out where to run, and they end up going uh, east and west, never going north and south, ends up being a bad play. If you do your job and get movement and get hats on hats, bodies on bodies, because, again, if you look at this movement up here, if you think about it from this perspective, this linebacker, Again, they move that defensive tackle two, three yards off the ball. That linebacker is stuck behind that defensive tackle, right? So think about it right here. So they start right here at the 11. Look where the defensive tackle ends up. Look where the linebacker is. He's about the eight. So if the linebacker literally comes off and delivers the greatest hit of all time and just jacks him up, it's a three-yard run, right? Bare minimum. Now, that's probably not going to happen, so it's probably going to be a much bigger run, which ends up being. And that's what getting movement at the point of attack and a solid effort on the backside will do to you. It'll give your running back a chance. It'll make your floor in terms of success of running play that much better. And then on top of it, just putting that guy in the dirt and exerting your will, that just is just icing on the cake. 